Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Afreen and I'm your host for the session. So to give you a quick brief today, uh, Quantancy is a pioneer in the education of algorithmic and quantitative trading. We have been in this industry for a decade now and have registered users from 165 plus countries across the globe. Today, we are presenting backtesting and live trading using Python presented by Dr. Hui Lu. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Hui, our presenter today. He is the author of iBridge Pi and founder of Running River Investment LLC. His major trading interests are US equities and Forex market. Running River Investment is a private hedge fund specialized in the development of automated trading strategies using Python. Over to you, Dr. Hui Liu. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let me share my screen. Okay, let me start. Okay. So my name is Hui Liu. Uh, I live in San Jose, California, United States. And uh, the, the title of my webinar is uh, web test, back, back, back testing and uh, live trading with interactive brokers using Python. So this is the contents of today's topic. First, I will give an introduction about algorithm trading, interactive brokers, and uh, iBridge Pi. Then I will explain a very simple trading strategy, daily close, I call it daily close reverse, which is just considering the close price, daily close price, and then if they're reverse, then we use this reverse to make a, a trading strategy. Then the next part is to implement this daily close reverse strategy uh, in hybrid pack. Next part, after we have the strategy, we will do the back testing, use iBridge Pi. There are uh, three parts I will explain. First, use uh, historical data provided by interactive broker. We call it IB to back test this strategy. Then another way is to use historical data from other data providers. Then the next part is after back test back testing, we can analyze back test results and to understand how is the strategy perform. Then after we are confident with the strategy, we can live trade the strategy using Ibridge Pi. The last part I would like to introduce is to use Ibridge Pi to place orders to multiple accounts, which is a very important feature for hedge fund managers, actually. Yeah, that's the contents of today's topic. So first, let me explain what is algo trading. So I copied the, the definition from Wiki and made a little bit change. Algo Algorithmic trading is a method of executing orders using automated pre-programmed trading instructions, accounting for variables such as time, price, and volume to send orders out to market over time. This is the, the definition, actually is the definition of algorithm trading. Think about what's the benefits of algo trading. I listed four things I can think of, actually just based on my personal experience. 
the first part is when you are using algorithm trading, there will be less pressure from constantly watching market. I think if you are have a, a, a similar experience about uh, uh, trading any securities and constantly watching the market, you can feel the pressure. And then if you use algo trading, you will feel more relaxed because computers will do a lot of things for you and, the, and you can enjoy more time actually. Also, because the coding can do a lot of things, you will have less human errors. Then, because of less manual works, you can have more free time. Because of less human errors, you can have more profit. That's the benefit of uh, algo trading. Then the next part is, how can we do uh, algo trading? I can think of uh, uh, four major components of algo trading. First is a broker, where is you can place your orders. Then the next uh, part is the internet. And it connect your computer with broker's computer so that you can place order via internet. The last part is programs where you implement your algo trading and then computer runs programs and then set up algo trading. Yeah. This is the algo trading. Then next part, let's in talk about interactive brokers. In the interactive brokers is an LLC. We call it IB, and it's a US-based brokerage form. It operates the largest electronic trading platform in the United States by number of daily average revenue trades. Um, this is a interactive broker so website. You can go there, take a look quickly. Yeah, this is an uh, interactive brokers. Sorry, I'm just checking the questions. Okay, this is an uh, interactive brokers uh, main website. Uh, if you are interested in it, you can just click why IBKR. Then you can read through about this page. Based on my personal experience, the advantages of IB, the most important to myself is, is advanced API technology. API stands for, actually is a, a automated program interface, which enables traders to do trading using uh, API actually. It's uh, just a uh, interface between two computers so that you can communicate the information. And AB, uh, IB's advanced API technology enable traders to use a program to trade. That's the most important thing I think for IB. The next part is IB provides very competitive pricing. So by trading with IB, you can uh, save some cost and make more profit. The next part is IB offers global market access. If you go through the website, you will find IB can access 125 markets in 31 countries and use 22 currencies. So it's a very uh, convenience to do trading with IB. Then the next part is how to do algo trading with IB. Just as I explained, you can use Python programs in iBridgePy and then get connected to IB and then trade. This is the brief introduction about the interactive broker. 
The next part, let's talk about iBridgePy. iBridgePy is a Python software helping traders to set up algo trading platform at their own computers or at the virtual computers in the cloud. Uh, this is iBridgePy's website, www.ibridgepi.com. Go there to take a look together. Yeah, this is uh, iBridgePi's uh, web, web page. You can take a look. So it's easiest Python platform to backtest and uh, live trade with interbank brokers. But actually, in the most recent release, you can use iBridgePy to trade with Robinhood. Robinhood is a US-based brokerage firm again, and it offers zero commission trading. So if you are interested, you can take a look. The advantages of iBridgePy, I will talk about. The first is iBridgePy can protect traders' intellectual properties because iBridgePy help traders set up everything at their own computer so that traders does not need to disclose anything or post any information on the internet. Think about the other competitors online. Most of them ask traders to code their strategies on their website. So think about if you code your Python on a website. So actually in Python, you cannot hide anything and then you upload your strategy to other website, there are definitely some risks of your intellectual properties. But think about it, if you do everything on your local computer, then that's, you can control everything. Yeah, that's the safest play, uh, way to protect your strategies. The next part of average pad is you can backtest and live trade together. One place, I will demonstrate that. The next part is you can use any Python packages, including uh, AI and then machine learning and other packages. You can trade with different brokers, manage multiple accounts, and run quantoping algorithms if you are familiar with uh, uh, quantoping. Preparation. There are a few preparations to set up uh, average pi trading platform, but it's a pretty straightforward. The first thing is to go to averagepi.com slash download to download the average pi there. Let's go through it very quickly. If you go to download, download average pi. And if you are a user, then you can log in. And then we can live there. Okay, it's there. Download the most recent library pack version. It's there. And if you are interested in what has been released, you can go to the release note and take a look right there. And then, so check out your operating system. It supports Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu Linux. Also, you need to think about what kind of Python you are using. If you are a Windows user, you must install Anaconda Python, but you can choose to use either 2.7, 3.6, or 3.7. For others, you can just uh, uh, follow the instruction here. What you need to do is go to average Python 2 64 bit if you are using Windows Anaconda 
2.7. So what you need to do is just click and download the zip file and save it to your local and then unzip it. Yeah, I won't explain it too much because it's pretty straightforward. And then what you need to do is to apply an account, either a paper account or live account with interactive brokers. So you go to interactive brokers, you can either open a real account or click free trial. Yeah, both of them works on average pi. Then the next part is download and install IB official terminals on your local computer. One of them called IB Gateway, the other way called Trader Workstation. You just click the download link. Let me do that quickly. Yeah, just click download and install the software as required. It's pretty straightforward. And then config IB Gateway and TWS. Install uh, Python because we are going to write the Python code and execute the Python code. So you need a Python. If you have any questions, you can go to Average Pi Tutorials to read it. Uh, read the instruction details tutorials there. There's tutorial, you can click uh, one of them or all of them. Other thing you may be interested in is average pi documentation so that you can see what functions are provided in average pi and what are their performance. If you have any other questions, maybe they are listed at the QA section. There you can go through questions and find out the answers. Another thing I would like to introduce is the community because the users are very active on this forum and you can see a lot of questions and answers there. Just quickly experience about that. Then the next part is give you a demo about how to configure TWS and IB Gateway. After you log in to IBTWS, it will look like this. You provide your ID and password. A few things you need to do is config, click file, global configuration, left side on API, settings, on the right hand side, what you need to do is enable ActiveX and the socket clients. Make sure the socket port is 7496 and then click OK. That's all you need to do to configure TWS. It's documented in the iBridgePy tutorial. If you missed it, you can go back to there. And then let me talk about the average pi quick demo here. So first step is to open a Python environment. Right now I'm using Windows so that I install the Anaconda. Anaconda has its own Python IDE environment called Spider. So I open Spider already. You can see I'm using Python 3.6, not the latest Python. That is also supported already. Typically, I like to organize my windows. So left side is the code, right hand side is the iPython console. 
what I like to do is restart the kernel at the beginning. And then first thing you need to do is open the file in iBridgePy folder called runme.py. This is the main entrance of iBridgePy. What you need to do is first find out your account code in IB Gateway or TWS. In TWS, you can see on the upper right corner, you will see your account code, DU230626. That's my paper account code. Write it down. And then look for the runme.py. You can see the account code is here. You just change it to your own account code. This is one thing you need to do. Okay, either real account or paper account, but I'm using paper account right now. Then the next, what you need to do is to choose an average by example code. By commenting out all other file names, I mean by that is if you open Rummy dot py you will find uh, multiple lines of file name with example code there you just comment in one line indicating the python code you want to run and comment out all others that's what you need to do run uh, uh, python code and then the last step is just run runme.py in Python. What I mean by that is just click this green triangle and run it. The demo I want to give you is, the first demo is example show positions.py. So this code, will download your account information and display on screen. We run it and take a look, wow, pretty fast. Let's quick look, take a quick, quick look. So average by version 5.64, file name is showing up there. The next part is starting initialize trader and initialize trader completed. When you see that, which means your average pi run while well on your computer. And then the next part, it will print out your account balance. Three numbers, cash value, portfolio value, and positions value. Then if you have any positions, for example, I have Apple, Forex, Euro to USD dollar, and I have SPY, which is the uh, ETF tracking SP500 index. So this is my positions. And you can trade the stocks, options, futures, Forex, any contracts supported in IB using average path. Then if you, you have any pending orders, it will list it up there. You can see I have one order, order ID is 134. Status is submitted. Order information there. You can see this is a limit to buy limit. Uh, by Forex, USD, uh, Euro to USD dollars. Limited price is a one cent. That's why it's still a pending order. And if you place orders which cannot be manipulated by the program, it will listed by perm ID. 
there so that your code cannot touch it. Okay, so Amazon and uh, Interactive Brokers stock there. Then END. That's the end of the information there. Okay, this is the demo of how to run iBridgePy. If you want to switch to other program, what you need to do is just comment out this line in Python. You use hash count, hash sign. Then the next part is to comment out this one. This one example is to show real time price. Right now, oh, market is open already. Let's still run this real time price. Right now, I'm showing real time prices of euro to USD dollars. You can see it prints out price every second. Yeah, let's stop there. And I like to clean the kernel every time. Make screen up. Oh, this is the code. Okay, this code is uh, very simple. What I want to show you is right now the market is open. I want to get the real time price of SPY. And let's print SPY. As simple as that. And then go to runme.py and run it. You can see SPY price coming in right now because right now US market is open. See it's going on right now. Let's stop it. For example, I just want to obtain historical data. What I will do is to comment out the other code and comment in this line so it will get historical data for example i just run it to i want to give you a feeling about how it runs so it print out the historical data of spy in my code i ask for the price of apple and google you can see the historical data comes in yeah, this is a quick demo of how average Pi runs. If you are interested in what the code in the sample in the sample code, what you need to do is open file. This is the average Pi folder, and you go to strategies and look for, for example, this is the code I used to get historical data example get historical data dot py you know open it up you can take a look it's very straightforward we define symbol and the request historical data and then print as simple as pi okay let's go back to the presentation Else. Okay, the code structure. So we start to talking about the Python code. I will talk about a few functions. Uh, at the beginning, it may not be as straightforward, but please follow me. You will understand it's a pretty simple actually. In average, there are three basic functions. The first one is called initialize. This function is used to declare average pi global variables. I will show you an example. This function runs once at the beginning of your execution. So which means just one time. If you want to run something one time at the beginning of your code, put it there in this function. The other function is called handle data. 
this is the function where you put your trading decisions. It runs every second as default, but it's configurable. You can change it. And as I mentioned, trading decisions are made there. If you want to make decisions, have a fixed schedule. For example, every second, every minute, every hour, or even every day, or every 10 minutes, something like that, you can configure it. However, you may not want to do something regularly, as often as one minute. You just say, I want to do something at the beginning of the market, 9.30 Eastern time. Or you want to do something just one second before the market closes, so that you will use a function called schedule function. You can schedule events there. You can call function there. Yeah, this is the three basic functions you need to run. You need to write your code. OK, give you a, let's talk about the code a little bit. So initialize function looks like this. In the example of show real time prices, so this sample code will print the ask price of SPI every second, just what I demoed for you. So in initialize, I define a global variable called security. The way I define it is I put context dot security. So in this way, context dot security becomes a global variable in average pi, so that you can use the use it in other functions, for example, handle data, context out the security here. And I use an average pi function called symbol to define the contract. So I put SPY, which means I want to trade SPY ETF and trade at IB. Then, because I want to print ask price of SPY every second. So I put my trading decision, even if it's not a trading decision, but just a print or action. So I put a function show real time price in handle data so that this part of code will be executed every second as default. And then I put the global variable here and tell it I want to have ask price there. And then I put a variable, local variable called ask price. And then I just print. As I showed you in the example, it just keep running every second. As we showed you the show real time price and it just keep going. It just show real time price. Think about you have the real time price you can do the calculation. For example, when the price is greater than $300, I just place order. So what you need to do is continue this handle data and place order there. Average pi will execute that. The next example is to fetch historical data. This sample code will fetch historical data of SPY daily bar from today go back to five days same thing i put global variable in initialize to tell the code i want to handle contract of spy and then i put things in handle data say first a print and then use the average pi function called a request history the historical data. And then I say I want SPY. I want the daily bar. I want to go back five days. Then hist is a pandas data frame. It has the return information of historical data of SPY and then print. Because I just want to do it once. Once. So I use n 
to enter my code. And then it will print out, looks like this, just as I showed you in the, the demo. The next part is to place order. So similarly, I define global variables and the shares, how many shares I want to buy, and then show real-time price as before. And if the ask price is greater than $100, one cent, I want to place order. I want to buy SPY, 100 shares, and the limit price is $99.95. I won't do the demo because it will place order. Another example is to use iBridgePy to search securities. For example, in this code, it, sh it search high social sentiment and then print it out. Also, I can add, I just only want stocks in US major market and the price is greater than $100. If you run this code, use a function called get scanner result, it will give you result and you can use it. For example, CI is the, uh, the highest social sentiment. Yeah, you can use it, this information. Okay, and then steps to build an algo strategy. You need to think about uh, what contract do you want to trade? Do you want to read in or hard code it in the code? How often do you want to make your trading decisions? If regularly, use handle data, or if you want to do something at spa times, you can use schedule function. If you want to calculate technical indicators so that you need to request his or data, and you need to think about what kind of order you want to place, and then you can just say it's market order or limit or stop order or even trailing orders. And let's talk about a sample strategy. I call it the daily close reverse. The description of this strategy is pretty straightforward. If today's close price is lower than yesterday's close price, which means there's a dip, so I think it's a buy opportunity. So I buy SPY using O cash. Otherwise, I sell off all positions. This is a typical daily reversion strategy. And uh, it looks like I need to hard code in my code, a hard, hard code the trading contracts in the code. And because I need to access close price yesterday's and today's, so that I need historical data, historical data. Looks like I don't need to run it very often, just at a few spot times. So I need to use schedule function. And I want to place market order for instant execution. This is the analysis of this strategy. The next part is this strategy code is very straightforward. I want to define a security, say I want to trade SPY, and then the decisions and actions are made in this function called schedule function. And what I scheduled to run is another function is called a daily func. It's defined there, which means I want to run it every day at 15.59 Eastern time, which is one minute before the market close every day. At that moment, I want to trigger this daily fun function. Okay, this part is code, this part is comments. So this function is defined actually here the trading decision is like this. The first, I use data.history to retrieve historical data daily bar. I want to go back two days and daily bar. 
and then I get a his, which is the data for data data series at this moment. And the minus two means the close price yesterday, and his minus one. I assume this is the close price of today because right now it's just one minute before the market close. If the close today greater than close yesterday, then I want to sell off all positions. I use a function called order target percentage and put 0.0, .0 which means I want to sell off all of my positions. In the other way, I want to buy SPY by all cash in. So I put 1.0, which means 100% of my cash. I want to use them to buy SPY. Uh, yeah, that's the end of uh, this uh, code. It's pretty straightforward. The next question definitely you want to ask is, is this strategy profitable? Okay, the best way to, to check is backtest it in average pie. Average pie does not have any historical data, but it can retrieve historical data from interactive brokers and use that data to backtest your strategy. Another example is moving average crossover. The description is like this. If the fast moving average start to jump higher than slow moving average and then buy SPY using all cash. Otherwise, sell off all positions. This is also a daily, but this is a typical trend strategy. It needs historical data and uh, similarly, you want to make decisions at spot time and you want to place market order for instant execution so that you can code like this. From here to here is exactly same as the previous example. And then, oh, not exactly same because I want more historical data here. And the next part is to calculate the fast moving average, calculate slow moving average. If fast moving average is start to jumping up, and then we place order to buy SPY all cash, otherwise sell off all position. So you can see sounds like it's a complicated strategy. Not that complicated, but the code is even much simpler like this. Backtesting. Backtesting is the process of applying a trade strategy to historical data and to see how accurately the strategy or your model would have predicted actual results. The basic thing is, is average pie will retrieve historical data from IB. All user provide, provided CSV files, which has a historical data. And then average pi simulate processing orders as IB server does. It support market order, limit order, and stop order right now. And the simulated transactions, it will be stored in another folder so that you can check the backtesting result and analyze your strategy. And the portfolio values is also recorded. I will show you how it looks like. The demo is to open a file called test mean demo one. Let's go there. Test me demo one. Let me open it up. It's a little bit longer than before, but then run me dot py. Let me explain what you need to do here. First, you need to comment in which strategy you want to run. This part is a demo close price reversion dot py. And the next part you need to change is account code. 
change to your account code so that you can retrieve historical data from IB. Then you don't need to change data provider name or run mode. The default mode is uh, in this testing is to run handle data every minute as Contopian does right now. What you need to do is to define the historical data injection plan. What you need to do is tell average Pi to retrieve, for example, SPY. You want a million data. You want to go back 10 days because you, in your strategy, you need to get the real time price at 359. So you need to get historical, historical data one minute to supply that data to your code. Also, you need daily data. Uh, in some case, because there are different bar size. So you need to explicitly ask for it from IB. So for example, here, SPY daily data go back 30 days. The next part is you need to tell average pi the time frame of your backtesting. For example, you the end time is now. You can see it's a daytime dot now. And the starting point is go back, for example, eight days. And the frequency you want to test is one is one minute. That's all you need to configure the back tester. And the code is open it up already, I think. If it's not open, you can go to strategy folder and go to demo close press reversion. Right there, here is the code I want to backtest. And then to run back tester, you need to go back to test me demo one dot py and run it. So at the beginning, you can see average pi retrieved historical data. Let's just let it run. Oh, I okay. it completed. So the first part is average pi retrieve historical data from IB. You can see it retrieves daily data right there. Retrieve the million data right there. And then data ingestion completed and print out your account information and start to run it, run your code actually. You can see daily fun runs at November 6 at 15.59 as you requested in your code and then run it, run it until November 11th. It starts to place order to buy SPY. You can see buy market order 324 shares and the price bought is $308.28 and sell all of them one day after following your strategy. Okay, this is the demo of run historical data from IB. Actually, one thing I want to mention is if you go to the folder of output, you will see right there. This is the balance log. You can check it out. The 
account balance and the cash value uh, starting from uh, $100,000 and go up a little bit. If you go to the output and the transaction log, you can see the transaction there. Okay, yeah. A few improvements actually needed here. For example, if you want to debug your code, you need to fetch exactly the same data from every uh, from IB for every test, which may violate IB's pacing rule. Another thing is you request a lot of minute bar information, but actually only the minute bar information at the 15, 59 is used in your code. So you waste most of the minute data. Another thing is sometimes you don't need the real historical data. You just want to test your code to find any coding bugs. So you really don't need historical data. You just need some red, random data. Yeah, to improve the performance, what I want to demo is to supply historical data by user. So we can go to test me demo two. It's right there. Same thing, you need to tell which file you want to run. What you need to change is change the data provider name from IB to local file. Same thing here. However, what you need to specify is you want to read your data from the folder of input of average pi. It's right there. So the data is saved here actually in the format of CSV. And in the injection plan, other than this part, you need to tell, I want to supply SPY minion data by this CSV file so that average pi back tester can use it. So this is the minion data, this is daily data. And because of the data, historical data I provide, I need to change the start time and end time a little bit. Then let's clean the kernel and run the file. And run it. So you can see it starts run from July 26 to October 6, and it, there is a transaction to buy and sell. So that in this way, you supply historical data from your local CSV file, and you can retrieve this information from, actually, you can retrieve historical data from other data provider to go through the backtest. Yeah. And the other quick demo is to, for example, in the code, and it goes through every minute to your code. But actually, what you really need is just uh, 1559 and then you can specify in your code that I just want to run them at some special second. Then what you need to do is to change the time generator time to custom and put the spot time into custom spot time list and then go through your back tester. Then the, your, back, your test will run much faster. 
Also, you can change the data provider name to random so that there's no real historical data needed. It's just a random data, but you can use it to quickly find out your coding box. The next part is performance analysis. Let's go to this example. I provided performance analysis chart.py. What I made is a fake performance.txt. Actually, you can change the uh, log info. Actually, you can change the file to your real log file and then run it. This is pretty straightforward to make a, a chart and calculate some variable. I could calculate some performance. Let's run it quickly. It looks like this. It's just a random data, actually, fake data, but it print out the last five columns of your balance log, calculate sharp ratio, and make a drawing. You can analyze the performance of your backtester. And then, after you analyze the performance, you feel comfortable, you can go to live. Then what you need to do is switch to runme.py and try your paper account first and run it against the real market to, to see the real performance using a paper account. And then what you need to do to live trade your know, live account is just simply to change the account code in runme.py and change it to your real paper account, uh, no, no, real account. Then you can live trade your strategy so that you can go live. Next part, I will show you how to use hybrid pi to handle multiple accounts. For example, you can change, you can, for example, in this example, you can place 100 shares in account number one, and you can place 500 shares of SPY to another account, actually and you can handle as many accounts as you want in your code right here. Yeah, this is the summary of today's webinar. I believe I can help you set up your own algo trading platform. You can backtest and live trade together in average pack. Average pack can trade with different brokers in this webinar, we talk about to trade with average uh, interactive brokers. And average pack can help you manage multiple accounts. It's a very important feature for, for fund managers. Overall, average pack is a flexible and easy to use Python platform. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Huiliu, uh, for taking a wonderful session and giving this information about the backtesting and how people can use interactive brokers using iBridge Pi. And thank you everyone for being with us till now. Uh, just to give you a quick brief, uh, iBridge Pi and interactive brokers and Dr. Huiliu is one of our very esteemed faculty members for our flagship course, EPAT. Thank you. Thank you very much.